tell you, this is a mouthful right here. Hillary protesters, black transgendered lives matter, chanting Hillary for prison. That's all our country is about. It's not about having privacy rights, private property rights, sovereignty. We live under a fiat currency system, but we can have black transgendered protesters saying Hillary for prison. Well, I guess they've got that right. Hillary Clinton, as I said a few weeks ago, really is very close to being destroyed politically. And the mantle of her invincibility uh, has certainly worn off in a big, big way. Meanwhile, Clinton's turning up her rhetoric uh, and comparing pro-lifers to terrorists. But Hillary doesn't care. She's gone out on the campaign trail and also sent emails and made phone calls. It's being reported by the Associated Press and others, and also Bloomberg Politics. Uh, it's big red linked on DrudgeReport.com today. Clinton camp claims it's already secured one-fifth of the delegates needed for the nomination. And basically says that she's already got the votes. And that they're not going to be able to stop her, so they better not try to push Joe Biden. And, of course, the big goal there uh, by Hillary is to put down the idea that there's a massive exodus away from her that's already happened. If Hillary Clinton can be shot down, this is a big, big, big political victory because she knows where the bodies are buried. She runs a lot of the blackmail operations. They have been in power now off and on for decades. They need to go. And as bad as Joe Biden is... He can probably be beaten easier by a good Republican candidate than Hillary can because Hillary, once she gets the nomination, it's just going to become uh, uh, total cult worship, get out on your belly, bow to the idol of feminism. It won't matter how criminal she is, what a liar she is, all the things she's done. It's just going to be she's a woman. This gimmick, I'd vote for a woman in one second flat. If she was like a Rand Paul, I'd vote for a black guy. One second flat. I could care less. Just give me free market. Give me lower taxes. Get out of my life. I will literally wash your feet. I mean, it's just ridiculous how they create identity politics to distract out of the issues. I mean, Republicans in the early 60s were ready to elect a Jewish guy named Barry Goldwater because he was smart, articulate, had a good voting record, and was basically like Ron Paul. And they actually ran campaign stuff claiming the Republicans that year were anti-Semitic. I went and watched a documentary uh, last night called The Best of Enemies about Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley, and I thought it was really good, actually. And I have mixed feelings about Buckley. I think he was good at many levels, but kind of sold out on his hardcore libertarianism towards the end. But hindsight's 2020. It's just really weird to be sitting there in the movie theater and the movie ends with me. <laughs> the movie ends with Alex Jones. I just thought it was really weird. I mean, it's getting to the point when you become like a card in the deck of culture that you, you turn on television and you're on and... That happened two days ago. I don't watch much TV. And you go to the movies and you're at the end of it. And the movie ends with a clip of me ranting at Piers Morgan. Just really bizarre. That is a very famous interview now. They say it's one of the most famous TV moments ever. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it's interesting. And it shows the effect the info war has had thanks to you. Monday through Friday, we're here live. And it is Friday, the 28th day of August, 2015. And I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. You notice I've been having Harry Dent. I've been having Peter Schiff. I've been having Gerald Salente and others on. We should get Max Kaiser on. He's been accurate in his predictions so far on the broadcast. 
There's so much to cover, but yesterday, I only mentioned it a few times, it really is the biggest news still. China is dumping U.S. securities, not just bonds, but other securities connected predominantly to the United States. There's definitely a trade war on, definitely a currency war with China, with its yuan and Japan, uh, with its yen and the United States with the dollar driving these down quickly. There is a massive slowdown in raw material being mined, being produced, because there isn't a market for it. The planet is in cardiac arrest industrially. Here in the United States and areas of wealthy Europe, if you're middle class or, or wealthy, you're not feeling it yet. If you're a blue collar worker, you're feeling it. If you're a uh, lower middle class person, you're feeling it. If you are a welfare recipient, you're feeling it because the checks aren't growing for what real inflation is. So we have deflation in the economy and in human activity. There's a slowdown, but there's also inflation in the currencies, in the price of a pound of hamburger meat. I mean, anybody goes to the store, you can see it. And I thought, is it just whole paycheck that's getting so much expensive? I'm going to go to HEB and see if it's gone up in price. Gone up as well. So HEB's a chain here in Texas if you don't live here. It's happening. Everything is going up except for commodities like fuel, and that's because the economy is basically in a free fall. This is a big, big deal, and it's a harbinger for things to come. And if you go to Infowars.com, we have reports uh, on the subject, but the place that really has the full breakdown on the stories I'm about to cover, if you want to follow along with them, is DrudgeReport.com. Exodus. Hundreds die just in the last day as desperate immigrants head for Europe, boat packed with refugees, smugglers beat migrants who beg for air. Desperate tide of humanity. And there's video of women running into barbed wire in Turkey. Uh, there's video of the boats capsizing. There's video of just hundreds and, and thousands pouring over fences. When I was in England, they were trying to have everybody remain calm on BBC, but you could see the concern where they've had to shut for months the main ferries and the tunnel. Because they cannot stop human waves of carjacking, truck jacking, North African and Middle Eastern immigrants just power surging through. And if you just go to YouTube and type in truck jacking uh, or immigrants attack drivers in, in Spain or France... I mean, there's hundreds of videos shot by the truck drivers. I, I've spent hours. In fact, we ought to make a whole special on this, just showing the, the highlights of it. It's scary. And the mayor in the French town ordered the ferry shut a few months ago. And every time they try to reopen them, it just surges again. So England, even though they want the illegals to get on the backs of the trucks and come in and they legalize them, they don't want it to be too obvious because now they're just carjacking, throwing the people out, driving the trucks in, and basically the British government just stands there and lets them do it. I mean, it is the collapse of society going on. We can roll the footage of your TV viewer of just the surging and the carjacking and, the, and they're robbing each other. And listen, you can have, a say, a North African fishing boat that can hold 50 people maximum. They'll try to put 200 in it, and it'll sink a hundred yards off shore. That's how desperate these people are. I wouldn't get in a boat with my kids if it obviously had water coming up to the edge because the first thing that happens when you hit any high waves, you're dead. How are you going to deal with people that desperate? Let me tell you, when you look at these immigrants, I'm not demonizing them. I'm telling you the facts. When you look at these immigrants from collapsing Africa and the Middle East, they're skinny, folks. They are almost look like concentration camp victims. They're desperate. Every military report from the UK, the US, shows the same thing from World War II and other conflicts. Within seven days of no f food, law and order completely breaks down. Within 10 days, almost anyone will kill anyone for food, especially if you have kids. You just won't want to do it, but you'll go kill people.
And within 15 days, 90 plus percent, something like 97 percent, depending on the study, be, resort to cannibalism. Let's say we got 49 people working in my office right now here at the InfoWars News Center. Customer service, writers, camera people, anchors, uh, researchers, producers, video editors, graphics people, the shipping department. It's all here in one place. Statistically, something like 45 of 49 would end up eating each other. And that's the same in your office and the same everywhere else. And I don't know what the elites are thinking. And, and, and I don't want to talk about my office so we can all think about how barbarous humans are. You know, when they study humans, they study rats. Rat colonies, when they get up to a large enough number, start having wars. And then when they start starving, they start first eating the other colony of rats. And when they've eaten that colony, they then turn on each other. Now, rats will do something humans won't do, though. A mother rat will be the last one living, knowing that she's got to get to a new place. She will eat her babies and then find a male, have sex, and then flee in, in, in a random direction, hoping to go have babies and survive. So rats are even tougher than we are, but not much. You think elephants act like that? No, they don't. Lions don't act like that. They won't eat each other. They'll starve to death. Humans will eat each other. And I'm here to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, the globalists did this on purpose. They know if they continue to allow food and continue to allow the, quote, development of the third world, that there'll be 20 billion people in 30, 40 years. So they have a plan to stop it at about 9 to 10 billion. And out of the total insane crisis that comes, they will bring in the total technological police state. And so they're going to allow giant waves of immigrants in with the welfare, with the incentives, with the free housing. Oh, they give the North African and Islamic immigrants free housing in Canada and other areas. I have a news article today. But if you're Christian, you are denied. That is actually in the Canadian newspapers. You're a Christian, you don't get a free house. You're an Islamicist, you do. You ask, why is that? Because there's select groups they want to bring in for the culture war. I mean, this is so diabolical. And when they're done flooding the West with illegal invasions, they'll use those people to divide and conquer, politically conquer, in a coalition government, fractured government, broken government system that Larry Nichols talks about in the Clinton strategy in the Clinton Chronicles, divide and conquer, and then they're going to shut the borders down, totally fortress them, and then that's when the bioweapons get released on the third world. For those of you out there that are racist and don't like third world people, they're going to kill all of them. They're going to hit them with bioweapons. And they've already been testing bioweapons like HIV and other things on them. They've caught the UN adding all sorts of sterilants to the vaccines. That's been mainstream news. But that's all just beta testing for the clash of civilizations. They're going to clash the third world. Six and a half billion plus people. About to be eight billion in just a few years. And then ten billion in the third world. They're going to allow controlled... You can have a whole lake of water with strip mining, with big fire hoses hitting the rocks to wash out the gold. So they got a whole lake of six plus billion people. You think it's bad them firing millions in a year. That's a controlled stream out of the lake. They're going to drain the lake and kill all those people. I'm giving you their master plan right now. But first, they're going to fire them into the West to take the West down. And I want to be clear. I care about these people. I have empathy. It makes me sick watching the footage that comes out of Africa as hundreds of people pile in boats that can't carry half of them. And hundreds die a day. But what incentivized it was the West saying you get free welfare, free housing, come to Germany, come to Italy, come to Spain, come to France. And yes, it's true. The globalists went into every country that tried to stabilize. You can say what you want about South Africa under apartheid. It was building up all of Africa. Not defending it, not defending Gaddafi and his socialism.
But he really lived in a tent, had a small compound with a swimming pool, and gave almost all of the country's money to the poor, went